In this video, I will discuss for you boundaries of inguinal canal. Um, this is the lower part of anterior abdominal wall. This is external oblique muscle. Direction of fiber directed downward and medial like this. In the lower medial part of external oblique, we have superficial inguinal ring. Inguinal ligament is the lower part or lower border of external oblique aponeurosis. Expansions of inguinal ligament, lacunar ligament, pectineal ligament, and we have here behind superficial inguinal ring, the reflected part of inguinal ligament. You can see the previous video uh, discussing the introduction of the inguinal canal. And after the external oblique aponeurosis, behind external oblique aponeurosis, we have arching fibers of internal oblique, like this and the arching fibers of transversus abdominis. We see that the arching fibers of internal oblique are more wider or broader than the arching fibers of transversus because the internal oblique arise from the upper two thirds of inguinal ligament, while transversus arises from the one lateral one third only, okay? So this muscle, internal oblique arises from two thirds of inguinal ligament, and this arises from one third only. The arching fibers of internal and transversus abdominis unit together forming the conjoint tendon like this. Behind the arching fibers of transversus, we have fascia transversalis. And in fascia transversalis, we have the deep inguinal ring. So I have here superficial inguinal ring, and that is a deep inguinal ring. Now, I want to see what about the roof and floor of inguinal canal. Inguinal canal extends from deep inguinal ring to superficial inguinal ring like this. Okay, this is the inguinal canal from deep inguinal ring to superficial inguinal ring. So roof of inguinal canal is formed by the arching fibers of internal and transversus. Floor of inguinal canal is formed by the inguinal ligament, the medial part of inguinal ligament like this, and lacunar ligament, the upper surface of lacunar ligament. We call the upper surface abdominal surface, and we call the lower surface femoral surface because this is the thigh directed toward the thigh. So the floor of inguinal canal is formed by the upper surface of inguinal ligament and the lacunar ligament here. This is about the roof and floor, okay? Roof arching fibers of internal oblique and transversus, and the floor is formed by inguinal ligament and the lacunar ligament. What about the anterior wall and the posterior wall? To the to understand the anterior and the posterior wall, I want to make a cross or transverse section through the inguinal canal. I cut like this, okay? So when I cut like this, I will remove the arching fibers here. I just see the beginning of the arching fibers in this section like this, and the conjoint tendon at the end like this. And we have a line here. This is external oblique, aponeurosis, and superficial inguinal ring, internal and transversus, conjoint tendon, and this is the fascia transversus. Don't, don't forget this. This is the reflected part of inguinal ligament, you understand this, okay? I will cut transversal like this, you see here? So this is external oblique and superficial inguinal ring, see here? External oblique and superficial inguinal ring. After this, after we cut it, this is the reflected part of inguinal ligament behind the superficial ring. You look here. This is the reflected part of inguinal ligament behind superficial inguinal ring. And internal oblique and transversus abdominis, okay? The beginning of the arching fiber like this. The more wider is internal oblique, the narrow fibers is transversus abdominis here. This is internal oblique and this is transversus abdominis, okay? The internal oblique and transversus abdominis form the conjoint tendon here. Remember that the conjoint tendon behind the reflected part of inguinal ligament here, the, the conjoint tendon behind the reflected part of inguinal ligament. And after all of that, we have fascia, fascia transversalis here with deep inguinal ring. So we here have, this is fascia transversalis and there is a deep inguinal ring, okay? So this cross section through inguinal canal. Again, I want to review this cross section, we understand the roof and the floor, okay? Again, don't forget the roof is formed by the arching fibers, okay? Of internal and transversus, and the floor is formed by the inguinal and upper surface of lacunar 
ligament. I'm going to ligament and lacunar ligament. In here. So this is the external oblique muscle. External oblique. Aponeurosis. Reflected part of inguinal ligament. Conjoint tendon. Fascia transversalis. What about this? Internal oblique. Transversus abdominis. And this is a deep inguinal ring here, and this is a superficial deep inguinal ring here, and this is a superficial inguinal ring. Where is the inguinal canal? This is the inguinal canal, okay? This is the inguinal canal. I want to, to understand this, the inguinal canal. From deep inguinal ring to superficial inguinal ring, okay? What are the boundaries? We have here the anterior wall of inguinal canal and the posterior wall. Where is the anterior wall? We have, this is the anterior wall of inguinal canal. And that is the posterior wall of inguinal canal like this. Posterior and anterior wall. Anterior wall is formed by external oblique aponeurosis and internal oblique transversus abdominis is not included in the anterior wall because narrow fibers in front of the rib ring is internal oblique the more wider fibers okay so the anterior wall of inguinal canal is formed by external oblique muscle and the internal oblique like this why the posterior wall is formed by this reflected part of inguinal ligament small part more larger conjoint tendon and the whole of the posterior wall is formed by fascia transversalis so we have three structures in the posterior wall Two structures in the anterior wall. Two, three structures in the posterior wall are reflected part of inguinal ligament, conjoint tendon, fascia transversalis. Two structures in the anterior wall we have the external oblique aponeurosis and this is the internal oblique transversus not included in the anterior wall. What is the inguinal canal? This is the inguinal canal. What about the contents of the inguinal canal here? We have in male spermatic cord like this from deep inguinal ring to superficial inguinal ring and ilioinguinal nerve the ilioinguinal nerve run between internal oblique and transverse abdominis entering the inguinal canal and coming out through the superficial inguinal ring so and in female we have also round ligament of uterus and ilioinguinal nerve so this is in male or female ilioinguinal nerve The ilioinguinal nerve does not come through the deep ring, okay? Come between, come through the space between internal oblique and transversus and enters the inguinal canal like this and comes out through the superficial inguinal ring. What about this structure? Male or female? In male, this is spermatic cord, okay? In female, round ligament of uterus. So if I ask, if we ask if someone ask you what are the, what are the contents of the deep inguinal ring, in female or male, only one structure. I I mean one spermatic cord is not one structure. You know, nine structure together. But I mean collectively spermatic cord. Okay, in male spermatic cord, in female round ligament uterus only through deep inguinal ring. What about the contents of the superficial inguinal ring, or structure passing through out through superficial inguinal ring? We have Spermatic cord and ilioinguinal nerve. What about in female? Deep ring, round ligament uterus. Superficial ring, round ligament uterus, and the ilioinguinal nerve. What are the contents of inguinal canal? Both structures, ilioinguinal nerve, and in male spermatic cord, and in female, round ligament of uterus. In the next video, I will discuss for you another subject, the inguinal triangle. Okay, this is very important to understand the types of inguinal hernia. I hope you understand the boundaries of inguinal canal. Thank you.